Boy, do I feel sorry for Final Fantasy VII fans right now, because only mere days after seeing the glorious leaked footage of Tifa and Aerith showing up that skin, thinking that maybe the ethics department at Square Enix had finally been crushed, been dissolved into nothingness, we get the new information that they are not only still active, but actively censoring a game from four years ago, the original Final Fantasy VII Remake. Welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and that's right, four years after release, Square Enix censored Tifa's cowgirl outfit in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I, I, I can't even imagine what it must have been like for the individuals who genuinely were excited for Rebirth and thought maybe there's going to be next to no censorship after the you know outcry that had been going on, on the internet, only to have that hope yanked away from them. So we're going to cover this. Before we do, hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day, almost every day at least, and especially when it comes to information like this, when free speech is at an all-time low. This is when my channel and channels like mine need your support the most because support from you means that we can get these messages out there to maybe affect some change in the future. So hit that subscribe button and let's check this out. While many fans had hoped that in recent moves by Square Enix were a sign that the infamous ethics department was no more, a recent and censorious update to Tifa Law Lockhart's Nibelheim character model in a four-year-old Final Fantasy VII remake suggests this is far from the case. Pushed out to all versions of the game on February 26th, the update for Final Fantasy VII remake released with only a brief patch note indicating that his dev team had made fixes to several bugs. Yeah, a eight gigabyte patch, by the way, and eight gigabyte pipes that was just fixes to several bugs. Now, I, I, I got you, like, I get it, updates come out all the time, even for older games, but an 8 gigabit patch update and it was just to fix bugs? Who are you trying to fool with lingo like that? And if for those of you that are so excited for Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth tomorrow, who are like, can't wait to get your hands on it, it's gonna be a day one purchase, I truly do hope you have fun with the game, I hope it meets all your expectations, but even if it comes out in a relatively uncensored state, when you see the fact that they are now censoring the previous game, which is 4 years old at this point, don't think that it's going to remain uncensored, if again it's uncensored to begin with. You are going going to have what you love taken away from you because Square Enix refuses to learn. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? However, fans have quickly discovered that Square Enix's changes ran deeper than simple coding updates. Yeah, 8 gigabytes, you think? In a thread, which was unsurprisingly later locked by moderators, oh, just right there, try trying to stifle you, the consumer's free speech, and saying, hey, this is what we want to spend our money on, who would have seen that? Discussing the exact content of the 8 gigabyte update, Steam user Briarpack noticed that the patch also edited Tifa's flashback outfit to show less cleavage. And there's going to be a lot of you know, virtue signaling justice warriors out there that talk about how all you male gamers and your male gaze with this male fantasy and all you want to do is see animated CGI titties that are just ones and zeros of code on the screen. It's not about that. I mean, sure, for some people maybe it is. But at the end of the day, this is a censorship issue. I don't think the vast majority of individuals who are fans of this content like to see something that they have paid for, altered and changed without their consent, and also altered and changed from the way that is originally intended by the Japanese studios, by the Japanese audiences, by the original creators. This image was meant to look like this. You were supposed to see Tifa, like, first of all, this isn't even that big of a deal. You barely got anything here. Like, yes, you, you can call this cleavage, but... Really? Like, let's, this is pretty damn tame, especially to what goes on in a myriad of other Japanese, uh, you know, media. But this is what they censor. They end up giving an undershirt. I'll show you a, a, a picture of that in a moment. But, uh, yeah, the Tifa cowgirl outfit now is her previously exposed cleavage covered up with an undershirt. And yep, th th there it is. Notice... Notice the difference there, lads? Yeah, I, I I can see. It doesn't even look covered up all that well, honestly. Like, this looks... May, maybe it's just a difference in the image quality, you know, the quality of the photo, but it also just looks like a poorly done editing job on top of that. But hey, again, Square Enix Ethics Department, if nothing, this proves that they're absolutely alive and well. This brings her model in line with now how it appears to be in the demo for Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth and suggests that sometime in the four years since Remake hit shelves, Square Enix felt her appearance had to be corrected. Combine that with the recent censorship of the game's panty-stealing scene, many fans have taken this remake patch as proof positive the company's aforementioned ethics department is alive and well. And a lot of folks were talking about how the ethics department, hey, they've had all their information scrubbed from the Japanese version of the website, or from the website in general. I mean, because that was the thing. People weren't actually comparing the Japanese to the American versions of the website. Well, I did that for you, so before we go on with this article, let me show you something interesting. So here's the Japanese version of the website. 
Yeah, yeah, really nothing about ethics or anything. Now, you do get a little bit of the DEI nonsense and the corporate philosophy. And yes, I said this is the Japanese version of the website. You know, this is jp.squareenix.com. I just, you know, ran the translation to turn it to English. Uh, but yeah, you, you actually do see in their corporate philosophy page, you know, some of the res uh, response sensi uh, sensitivity and flexibility to environmental changes. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, what, what are some of the others here? common principles uh, yeah here we, we got we got diversity as a guiding principle so needless to say it is it's not all well and good just because the actual title was removed from that portion of the Japanese website but then you go to the American website it's still there boys and girls it's still all well and there we are on the sustainability and social responsibility page where they talk about the sustainability and social responsibility of things such as environmental and social initiatives so you're trying to tell me that yeah it may maybe things are all well and good for the Japanese version maybe hey the Japanese version comes out and you guys do get a full uncensored product but that's not what we in the West are gonna get if you watching this video, considering only like 1.6% of my viewers are Japanese, the vast, vast majority of you guys live in the Western world, your version of this game is absolutely going to be altered, whether you like to admit or not, because the Western Square Enix website fully still embraces DEI, environmental social messaging, the whole nine. First unveiled to the world in 2019 after Final Fantasy VII Remake sales director Tetsuya Nomura confirmed that Tifa's chest had been tightened in Remake based on the department's recommendations, Square Enix originally claimed that this only function was to evaluate game content to make sure it aligned with the anticipated age ratings and standards across the globe. We all know that this is obviously a lie. This is absolute bollocks. The fact of the matter is, when you take a look at what the, those initial uh, screenshots showed, Tifa with the little bit of cleavage that still showed next to nothing, combined with the covered up version of the undershirt, none of that was going to change the game's rating. That wasn't going to take a game from being rated M to being rated T or anything to that effect. So while this may have been what the PR team said from the jump and what Tetsuya Nomura may have said from the jump, and frankly, I, I don't want to blame Tetsuya Nomura. The dude's a legend. I don't know how much about this he knew didn't know. I mean, he, he very well could have been in on it the whole time. He knew that this was going to be the case. He knew this is what the ethics department would do, but he had to play ball because he works with the company. Or maybe he had no idea the extremes that they would take it to, but they have absolutely taken it to the extremes. However, a 2022 job listing revealed that the ethics department's duties also entitled or entailed checking all games' expressions, including scenarios, illustrations, designs, and effects to ensure that they do not contain expressions that are discriminatory, Prejudicial, pre prejudicial or offensive. Now, I'm genuinely curious. I, I, I mean, for any hardcore SJW feminist type that's watching this, I mean this in good faith, despite the fact that there's no one like that watching this that has gotten this far in the video. What's offensive about this? Like, I, I'm genuinely curious. I don't see what is offensive about this, considering I see so many of you blue-haired land whales wear shirts like this, despite the fact that you're 400 pounds and actively shouldn't be wearing clothes like this. So what, what, what's wrong when a cartoon character, what is effectively a cartoon character, does it? As noted above, the censorious move unfortunately comes just after a pair of recent developments had given rise to the fan hopes that Square Enix had shuttered their department's entire operations. The first of these developments came in January, January of this year, when per a report from Niche Gamer, it was discovered that the Ethics Department recruitment page had been taken and still remains offline. And that was why I showed you guys earlier, yes, the Ethics Department portion of this, you know, is remained offline, but again, it's still in the corporate philosophy page, you know, there's still remnants of it, so, you know, what, what are you gonna do? They didn't actually remove it, they just tried to bury it and hide it, act like it didn't exist, when there are still remnants on the website. The second was the reveal of Tifa's wardrobe options for the upcoming trip to Coastal, uh, uh, Costa del Sol and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. In addition to the casual beachwear worn by the girls in the game's final trailer, a clip shared by Japanese video game news outlet Famitsu revealed that Tifa, as well as Aerith, would also have the option to hit the beach in particularly flattering bikini. And hey, we all reacted to this. We were like, whoa, what the hell? Actual jizzle, jiggle physics? We didn't expect that, and you shouldn't expect that, because that's not what we're gonna get here in the West. Or if we do, it ain't gonna last very long. Enjoy it while you can, gamers. Unfortunately, despite the fact that such normally presumed ethics department targets as Tifa's deep cleavage and cloud clearly uh, gu uh, gu gopping 
I think it's supposed to mean gawking, at her chest made it into rebirth, and now it seems that inclusion was more of a fluke than an actual sign of change within Square Enix. And that's why I said from the jump from the beginning, but nobody wanted to believe me, no one wanted to take my side on this, nobody agreed. They thought, hey, and don't get me wrong, I'm normally the first one to advocate for giving the benefit of the doubt, but this just, you know, they, they say when something seems too good to be true, it probably is, and this is one of those, it's too good to be true moments. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the set to cut its way exclusively, yeah, we, we, we don't care about any of that. The fact of the matter is, there is still obscene censorship going on in the Final Fantasy games. Not only is there going to be censorship in the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which everybody is excited for the re release of tomorrow, I would be excited for it, but I'm a PC player, so uh, until the game gets a PC port, I ain't playing it. On the plus side, when it does get a PC port, hopefully there's going to be a way to mod out all the intrusive censorship changes that will inevitably come to pass, but again, th that that's, that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, they are modding old games. They are censoring a four-year-old version of Final Fantasy VII Remake just before the release of Rebirth. For what? W was there actually somebody on the internet who just now was playing Final Fantasy VII Remake for the first time that just cried with such fervor that Square had to take notice? I, I can't imagine they would waste so much development time, money, resources to add an undershirt if it weren't for some sort of social and or political reason. This is them absolutely sending a message about what they believe and where their morals and values lie. Their morals and values do not lie with giving you, the paying customer, the, you know, the intended product that you wanted to purchase with your hard-earned money. They care about sending a message. This goes all the way back to the video I did not too long ago where I said Japan is going woke and lo and behold, Behold, we see it here. Square Enix is doing it, Capcom is doing it, Sega is doing it, Konami is doing it, and in the Japanese anime side of things, these studios are letting Western situation, well, uh, Western corporations just get away with dubbing it however, because hey, maybe that's what they think sells in the West, who knows. But at the end of the day, we are going to have to stop looking to Japan to save us, because Japan themselves are also falling. But those are just my opinions, let me know yours in the comments down below, or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe, I'm a nerdy news channel, I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about video games, but anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon and become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord, choose the articles that I cover and the sorts of messages that I want to give you guys. I would love to hear your input. And hey, check out the merch store. Use discount code VITALIDOL. Get a mug or a t-shirt. I would love to see it tagged on Twitter or Instagram. And until next time, it's all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.